welcome to Cohen in the City and uh, always interested to meet uh, new people, if you will. And I've kind of met these three individuals by email and now I'm meeting them via Zoom via our Suburban On Air. Uh, it's the Team Frank uh, Akeep, if you will, uh, Kimmy Chadell, uh, her daughter Zoe Doyle and her son Garrett Doyle. And they're part of Team Frank Africa, which builds uh, preschools in Africa. And it's a very interesting, actually tragic story that has a very kind of happy ending in the sense that such good work is being done. Uh, Kimmy, please tell me who was Frank and yes. how Team Frank began. Um, my husband, Frank Joseph Doyle was born in Detroit, Michigan, and we met in New York City. We both worked in finance, and Zoe and Garrett were both born in New York City. Um, back, Zoe's born in 98, she's 21, and Garrett was born in 2000, he's 20, and Frank uh, perished in the World Trade Center attacks. So he was in the second tower to get hit and the first tower to collapse. And Frank's last words to me was to tell Zoe and Garrett every day how much their papa loves them. And he says, right now I need your help. You need to call 911. So Frank died, he was 39 years old. I was 37, Zoe was almost three and Garrett was uh, 15 months old. So we packed up our home in Englewood, New Jersey and we moved up to the Laurentians where we spent um, the next couple of years. And what was very helpful for us initially, especially for me, was we were doing grief counseling in Montreal and we would go to the grief center where Zoe and Garrett would meet with um, a counselor who was specialized in children's grief. And I met with the adult counselor. And she said to me, pick two days a year to honor your husband. And every other day of the year, these children need their mother to live in the present. And she said, pick something that um, would be special for Frank, something that the kids can you know, work towards and be a part of and you know, honor him, but you need to live in the present. So long story short, in uh, May of 2002, we traveled down to New Jersey and we did a five kilometer road race at the JCC in Tenafly. We ended up doing this race for the next 18 years as a team to honor Frank. Because in Frank's last summer of his life, he did this race at the JCC and Frank and his three friends who ran with my brother and I, they all perished on 9-11. So we said, this is one day that Team Frank's going to honor Frank and his colleagues from KBW. And then three weeks before he died, he did his first triathlon of his life up in Senegal. So we decided that would be the second day that we honor him every year. So for the next 17 years, Team Frank would gather in New Jersey and Tenafly for the Senegal triathlon. And in between, we had lots of friends who said, we want to honor Frank, but we can't make it to Canada or they couldn't join us in New Jersey. So we created uh, team shirts. So these shirts started to travel to Europe, to South America, to the United States, across Canada, to Europe. Um, friends would go and do a sporting event and they would send us a picture in their shirt and say, we're having a Frank day. You know, wanna share this with Zoe and Garrett. So for example, Team Frank, the, the sports team that was created in 2002, has done Ironmans, triathlons, um, uh, ski races, climbing the Dolomites in Italy, uh, on horseback, backpacking through the, the Rockies, just all sorts of cool events all over the world with these shirts that we're traveling. Then in the summer of 2014, we decided to, um, I brought my kids with me to South Africa on a trip that was kind of a dream for me. I had been to South Africa for business back in 1997. I used to work in emerging market sales and I was on an investor trip in South Africa and I remember thinking, if and when I ever have children, this is the trip that I would want to bring them on, to come and see the wildlife, to experience the communities nearby. And having worked in emerging markets, I've been to many third world countries, but the trip to South Africa really stood out as one of the most incredible experiences of my life. So I started traveling with Zoe and Garrett in 2013. We went to Costa Rica to, and we brought 50 pounds of school supplies with us. And then we started doing, um, we did trips to Kenya, we did Rwanda, where we brought um, school supplies, soccer balls. And in 2017, in the summer of 2017, we decided let's take this amazing sports team and start building schools and start changing lives for young children, as opposed to just giving out school supplies and soccer balls, let's do something much bigger. So in 2017, in Montreal, we created a Canadian not-for-profit called Team Frank Africa, Inc. 
And since then, uh, we built one school in the summer of 2018. We built our second school the summer of 2019. Our third school is being completed as we speak. We had 24 Team Frank volunteers that were supposed to be in South Africa in June, but we had to delay the team going to South Africa because of COVID. And right now, um, we're fundraising to build our fourth school. What an amazing story. Uh, so Zoe and, and Garrett, I'll ask you each the same question. Uh, you were toddlers, so I, I guess you don't really have any vivid memories of your dad, uh, yet your whole life is built around a man you, 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 you know is a great man, but you didn't really get to know. Uh, Zoe, maybe you could start off. Yeah, well, I think because like from such a young age, we started um, with Team Frank and all these athletic events and those two weekends a year where everyone would be together. And we were constantly surrounded by so many people who loved him and knew him. So we felt growing up that that we knew him. And I do have memories, but I think they're mostly um, memories from like videos and pictures I'm seeing. Um, and I'm sort of creating these memories for myself. But of being surrounded by all this love and all this support and all these stories and memories. I've always felt very connected to him and yeah. Uh, Garrett? Um, like Zoe said, the whole team and everything like that keeps his legacy and his memory alive for me. But a lot of it is that the people coming to this, they tell me stories and they tell me stuff about him. And honestly, that's how I know my dad. I know him from what people tell me because I was so young when I lost to that I didn't exactly have the opportunity to know the guy. Uh, uh, Zoe you have an event coming up for Team Frank Africa on August 10th uh, in Montreal. Why don't you tell us about it? Yes yeah, so we're partnering with the Royal Mount Drive-In Movie Theater and we are going to have um, a virtual safari experience. So the um, safari company that we partner with in South Africa we partner with their philanthropic and, and all of our schools are built in the communities surrounding um, this area. Um, so they're gonna bring us on a virtual experience. We're gonna start um, in our schools, learning a little bit about what Team Frank Africa does, and then they'll bring us into a virtual safari game drive where we get to see the animals, get sort of the full um, African experience that you would get when you come on one of the school builds. And that's gonna be followed by a feature film, Sahara, um, and there are three levels of tickets that you can purchase and all the funds are going towards um, our fourth school build. So we have a VIP safari package where it's $100 per vehicle. Um, everyone gets popcorn, a mask, um, and then there is a VIP safari package. It's $250 per vehicle. You get VIP parking. You're entered into a raffle. You get two of these Team Frank Africa hoodies. Um, and then you get a big family size snack box. And then for bigger donors, there is a platinum safari package option. It's $1,000 per vehicle. You get the VIP safari package, everything that was included before. You also get priority outdoor seating. Um, you get a complimentary dinner. Um, you get an exclusive chance to win a safari experience in South Africa for four nights at the lodge where you're seeing this virtual experience beforehand. Um, and yeah, so there's, it's a max of 225 vehicles. So we're hoping it's a big success. And how do people uh, get tickets? Do they go to your website? We have a ticketing link up on all of our social media. Yeah. It's directly with the Royal Mount. Okay, yes, perfect. I will, uh, I will put that uh, in the description of this video for, uh, for readers to, to get more information on. Uh, Garrett, I know there's other events that take place throughout the year, and uh, I know right now we're in the midst of, uh, of a heat wave, but uh, snow will be here. Um, I don't know if skiing is going to be allowed uh, when COVID uh, continues uh, to ravage our lives in the, the winter, but you have a, a ski event that you hope to have, have uh, occur as well. Yeah, I mean, COVID aside, hopefully December 19th, we'll be hosting our second ski event, which will be the second event supporting the fourth school build. And at this event, you're going to buy a ticket. And for a ticket, you get to ski at night, you get to come out, you get to support Team Frank Africa at Mojavitan up north. You can, um, you can compete Saint in a ski race if you want to. There's a ski race mm -hmm. for skiers. There's also a pub dinner that's included. It's a fun night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. 
it sounds sounds very interesting. Now, now, Kimmy, uh, you know, when I when I've read about Team Frank, uh, we talked before about this. Really, is a book your your life uh, of of tragedy, and you suffered another tragedy in your life when your life partner passed away just just a few months ago, very unexpectedly. Uh, yes. Tell us about that, and and also the book that you plan to write about, I guess, your life and and your journey. Yes, we are in the process of writing a book. It's kind of a healing process. We started it a few months ago and we hope to publish by next summer. Um, last fall, we had, um, I had an opportunity to go share our story in Los Angeles with Frank Buckley on KTLA. And when we finished the segment in Los Angeles and we shared our story, he's like, this really is an American story. I said, well, it is, but I'm Canadian and my children have been raised in Canada. He's like, well, okay, it's, you know, it's a Canadian American story. But he was saying that very often people who've been on his show can use the interview as a segue to go on to talk shows. So we were thinking, well, maybe a way to spread the story. Because Team Franks, it's, it's a grassroots organization. We're small. We're based in Montreal. But to be able to grow and hopefully build two schools a year, we need to have a, a larger base. So being able to um, share our story in the United States, where the... Um, I don't want to say that the United States is more affected by 9-11 than Canada is. I'm not saying that at all. But I know just from being on KTLA, complete strangers reached out to me. So we thought, well, if we have a book that tells a story, and it's not, I don't want it to be just another 9-11 widow story, because there's actually quite a lot, and they're, they're heart-wrenching, and I don't want people to feel sorry for us. I'm hoping that when people pick up this book, there's like, wow, this family's been through a lot, and look what's come out you know, in South Africa, look what they've been able to do and just encourage people, you know, to be resilient and to wake up with a positive attitude and to figure out how to forge through these difficult um, circumstances. So that's the book. Um, the, the big tragedy that we've um, been healing from was uh, February of 2019, so 16 months ago, um, I lost my second life partner who also helped me raise Zoe and Garrett. His name was François-Claude Paquette. He was 45 years old. And in November of 2018, he was diagnosed with uh, very advanced colon cancer. And he fought a tough battle for 100 days. And he chose medical aid in dying. And within 100 days, he was gone. And that was kind of a, like, wow, can we, you know, how do we handle this? He was, you know, a huge part of my kid's life. When, when I started um, dating Francois, Garrett was in kindergarten at LCC and Zoe was in grade one. And, you know, he, he traveled with us and he's, he was, you know, he kind of, he didn't step into Frank's shoes because my children all, always said, we have a daddy, he's just not here. And Francois was like, I don't want to be their dad. He says, you know, I want to be their friend and I want to be there to support them. So we're still, I, I, I find it very hard, especially now my two kids go to school in the United States. So I'm very much an empty nester and to have lost Francois, you know, a year ago and then to deal with COVID, it's been, it's been a lot, but we're forging ahead. We're very excited about this fundraiser. We're hoping that people who don't know us just want to come and see an interactive safari in South Africa and see the movie Sahara with Matthew McConaughey and Penelope Cruz. And um, it's all for a good cause. Well, I take my uh, hat off to each one of you. You're doing a terrific thing. Um, and, um, we, we definitely look forward to learning more about Team Frank in the weeks, months, and, and years ahead. Thanks for joining me, and good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye, guys. All right. It's been great having the, this, uh, this family with us, doing a great job, and we'll be back in touch with them in the future.